weather, any kind of weather that you want, it'll do it. I think a few steps back though, as we go through it here, I'll get into systems. So okay. systems integration pages. So what's really cool about the airplane is the uh, aircraft system interface with the electrical system and, uh, and, and functionality of the airplane, that's what it's based off of. So um, we start here on the operations page. These are just pages of systems okay. built in. Everything on the right is in duplicate on the left. Okay. So if you know if I want to look at something while you want to look at something else, we can do that. Okay. So uh, we can go through and split our systems. So we have a uh, weight and balance. Mm -hmm. So in the weight and balance display, you can actually have different configurations of seating in here. So based on if you put take seats out or leave seats in, you can add them that way. Okay. So ours is uh, not like that right now. Ours is like that. Okay. So I actually pulled a seat out the other day. We had a guy with a bunch of golf clubs and stuff. So I took a seat out, threw it on the back, just for comfort. So. In the pilot seat, you can actually turn a null out and put the weight of the person in the seat. So you put them in, it'll actually draw your CG line on the graph here and, and add up your fuel and everything for you and tell you how much more you can take. Huh, it's all automated, nice. so you know, there's no guesswork in it. Okay, so, does it calculate your uh, takeoff distance and all those things? Uh, no toll data, but it'll actually give you the ref off of this, off okay. of what we're setting in. So you can use your ref and then you, do, you still have to calculate your takeoff. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, on the iPad app, most people do it, but you can do it any which way you want. So once you accept the weight, you go into V-Speeds and set the outside air temperature. Okay. I just push this knob in, it'll say MAM for manually set. As soon as it does that, we're going to set the rotation by pushing this button. Mm -hmm. You'll see it come up on the airspeed indicator. Right there. Uh, nice. So it bugs 86 knots. So as you're coming down the runway and you get above 40 and gets up to 80, it'll actually say ROT for rotate. Okay. And you rotate and off you go. Um, and that's for flaps stuck at takeoff. So you can change it here to get your, if your flaps were stuck, you know, up, then you would suck on the oven and rotate would be 106. But obviously takeoffs where we default it to normal. But that's what we use takeoff flaps. It's a big um, difference, 20 knots. Oh yeah. 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 You have systems tests here built in. So your cockpit lamps, you just, instead of having like a push test enunciator, you actually just push here. So it lights up all your enunciators as well as your keyboards. So there's 11 lights. We consider each one of those a light. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 11. And there's 10 lights on the keyboard. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And uh, so that's all we're checking there. You have an auto flight, so you would go an auto flight, you can start test, autopilot, heading, nav, all that stuff. So you can here, and you can go here, and you can go to uh, heading mode, and you can turn your heading bug to the right, it goes right, the stick goes right, go left. You know, if you wanna if you wanna pitch it back up, you can tilt the command bars up, and it starts coming back. You wanna go forward yeah, and check yeah. it in. So all that's yeah. automated. Same thing I do on this series. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stall protection, what's really neat about this airplane, I'll put the speaker up in it is that the stall protection gives you an oral warning and a visual warning, so it says stall, tells you, but also has stick pusher, so you can hold it real light in your hand there, you can hit start test, and so it's gonna give you a stall, stall, stall. the second time it fires the pusher. Stall, Here it comes. push, there it is, push. It'll actually lower the nose for you to keep you from uh, getting to the secondary stall. Uh, okay. and so anytime you hear push, firewall immediately, yeah. it comes right out of the stall. Okay. You, you normally lose about 40 feet in a stall in a jet, because it's two jet motors, real light airplane, it comes right out of it. Really quick, really fast. Terrain, standard terrain, traffic, standard traffic, and warnings. Um, ice protection page, so it's a visual description as well as um, you can make changes here. So if I want to turn the left windshield heat on, mm -hmm. you just press the button to normal and it turns green okay. and starts heating up here okay. in between the diverse. If, if it's a really bad day, you want it on high, say it was uh, fogged up and you couldn't get the fog off, you go to high for about a minute, it's going to go away real quick. Oh, yeah. It went right off. Um, we don't really use it that often on the aircraft, but obviously heavy icing conditions, something like that where you need the visibility landing, you turn it on here. Any color codes on when you turn it on. Okay. Same thing with the engines. So to turn the engine anti-ice on, we'll go to the engine. Actually lights them up. When the engines are running, those will be green. And then the boots are all the way up, the boots would light up as well. So with it, with, with it running, they all turn. And it'll okay. tell you they're on. Do you so, cycle the boots yourself? Or it just automatic cycles? Automatic cycles. Okay. Once, and, and the policy for us is, once you turn it on, you leave it on. Okay. So um, you let it get up enough. You know, you look at it, take a look at it. Okay. At night, there's a little wing inspection light here. Yeah. It lights up and lights up the wing out there at night. Okay. And you would look at it once it's built up. And you turn them on, leave them on until you're out of the icing conditions. And that's the kind of procedure. So okay. um, in the thousand hours that I've flown this thing, I've only needed them once. That's it. So okay. uh, we fly in icing all the time, but so you flew the old clubs. I flew the original model. And I, flew, yeah, I thought I, I recognized you from uh, before. I probably met you about four years ago. Yeah, I've flown them all the way up. Yeah. 10, 13, 15, 17, uh -huh. and IFMS. I probably, I've flown the IFMS more than anybody. I fly for Mason full time. Uh 
uh-huh. now, so he rides in the back, and, uh, and so I just, that's what I do. Okay. And uh, we obviously we fly probably more than anybody right now. Yeah, so. Clearly, yeah. Um, okay, so really cool about pressurization. Are you familiar with any pressurization before? Have you ever, had, you ever worked with a pressurization system? Uh, no, but go ahead. go ahead. This is really cool. It's really, really simple. The pressurization will automatically put in the location of whatever you put in your FMS. Mm-hmm. So it'll set it for you. It'll automatically control your pressurization. So you take off. Okay, it's like the new Plutus NG. That's it. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, you yeah. go all the way up to 41,000, yeah, yeah. you come back down, everything's done yeah, automatically for you. You don't have to yeah, dial it That's in. It. Yeah, yeah. So it also gives you an option to do it manually. So if you knew you were coming to sea level, you'd set in 100. Okay. Um, but since we put it into the um, autopilot, FMS, yeah. the FMS or whatever, I think this is going to Atlanta, so we would set it back to Charleston at 46 feet. It does it automatically. Okay. Really nice. Uh, flight control systems are a really simple hat here. So yeah. trim forward, so you go forward, you turn it back. Same thing on yours here. Yeah. Left and right aileron. Yeah. If for some reason you had a failure, you can go into alternate mode you can actually dial it digitally to get you on the ground. It's an override, so if you had a trim failure, you go into alternate. Okay. You can change any trim okay. manually, so it's really neat. Works great, but obviously normal is the normal, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's okay. the way you do it. Um, environmentals, it has an air conditioner on board, obviously, so we turn the AC on. Mm-hmm. You're gonna feel it come on here, you feel it right there? Yeah, yeah. Your feet, so you can set 68 degrees in the front, 70 in the back, and the AC is gonna So you pump. have two ACs, or one AC? One air conditioner motor, Two environmental, two evaporators. Oh, okay. So you got one for the front, one for the back. Oh, okay. So whatever you set up here, it'll it'll work to maintain it. It gives you outside air temperature at all all altitudes in flight. So outside, it'll say like negative 60 Fahrenheit in your top, you know. And it, everything's so it's very clear what the temperatures are, what's going on. Um, once you turn the air conditioner on, you actually have a dehumidifier as well. It comes on in here, in the side. So you have a dehumidifier. Yeah, yeah. And if you want a defogger, you turn it on, and you'll feel the defogger start pushing out top here. It'll come on full steam ahead. So, yeah, yeah. So there it is. You can hear it. Yeah. So the loudest part of the jet is the air conditioner. So I mean, it is a whisper quiet airplane. When you turn the AC off, it goes just silent, silent. Okay. So in in flight, that's yeah, about it what it's goes. like. I mean, it's it's, just, it's crazy. If you have a low fan on, maybe if anything, that's about what it's like. I mean, it's whisper quiet. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So I'll check it back up on high for you while we're sitting. So what do you use for a headset? Um, Clarity Loft. You wear clarity a lot, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, you you don't, you don't need a, a headset at all, bulking headset at all. It's nice. really nice. There's 127 electronic circuit breakers in the system, and two on the on the on the hard panel here. So you don't have walls of circuit breakers over your head on the side. All you have are two main circuit breakers. The reason they put those there is if you had a full electrical failure, because people say, "What do I do if the electrical fails? What are we going to do?" So um, at our electrical system, we actually have two batteries on board. They sit right behind the panel. There's a le- there's one here on the left and one on the right. This one on the right's for start. The one on the left's for systems battery. So if you had a, a failure of the electrical system, you would actually pop your keyboard out. You'd select your left PFD and you would hit composite mode. And now every integral system and everything that's important comes up on one screen. And it will actually shut down these screens to shed the power load. And you're controlling these screens manually now. You still have all your systems built in in front of you, mm-hmm. everything we just looked at. Yeah. And then you've also got your HSI. So engine gauges, landing gear, the whole nine yards, which is really, really cool. Okay. And, and now you've got uh, up to 60 minutes, because you got two batteries, up to 60 minutes of power. Okay. To land. And they are Obviously fully you would redundant, land. like in the Pilatus? Are they fully redundant? Yeah, these systems are. I don't know, the batteries, I mean, the, can, can one battery runs everything for 60 minutes? One battery for 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Same everything. as you're used to, that's right. They're okay. 24 volt battery, how many amp hour? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I don't even know. Forty, what would it be? Forty-three. I don't even know what the normal. Normal's uh, ten amp hour on most airplanes. It's way bigger than but that. It's got to be a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot bigger than that. Um, I'll look it up for you in a minute. You got uh, two hundred amp uh, generators. Two hundred fifty. Two fifty on each side. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Twenty-eight volt, obviously. Yeah. Systems. Okay. Two hundred fifty amp, thousand crank amps. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you got one on each engine, so left and right here. And uh, there's a couple limitations there, but no big deal. What's really neat about the electronic uh, circuit breakers is that to crank this aircraft, all you got to do is turn these three switches on. Mm-hmm. You'll set that temperature. When you set that temperature, it does a couple things. It actually sets your performance number and your FADEC for the engine start. So you won't you won't be able to uh, do a hot start. If you have a hot start, there's not enough battery. The engine will add, automatically shut itself down so that you don't burn yourself up. So to crank this airplane, all you got to do is go up here to the own start and twist it to the own start position. That's no it. start cranking. 
it'll automatically, because they're electronic circuit breakers, it'll automatically separate these line contactors so that the generator doesn't come on and fry your avionics bus. Consider like this is a Ford avionics yeah, yeah. bus working off a systems battery. So it separates these contactors automatically. It automatically introduces the fuel for you. It automatically rotates up and does the whole thing, the whole process. When it's done, the ignition light will go out, and you just go over here and you take your generator and turn it to the auto position. And it'll, once that's done, it puts the contactors back together, hooks the generator up, and it turns the uh, ground power off. Everything's done automatically for you. Everything done, That's yeah. it. So to crank it, you put it on start, put your hands yeah. in your lap. It's really cool. And it, and it works really, really well because of the ECBs. And then continuous um, ignition is for icing? It is. Uh, heavy turbulence and icing conditions. Okay. That's, that's correct. So, um, just to kind of show you, and I'll show you real quick, I'll just get it over here. So, let me go uh, system over. We're going to do fuel panel. Here, Romeo Alpha, Charles, Tiger, we'll turn them off. So, in this case, if you had uh, my systems, we'll go to fuel system. The left fuel pump, it's off right now. If you turn the pump on, it'll automatically turn the pump on for engine start and also for cross feed. But in this case, if I turn it on, the pump actually turns on and turns green. You see, the, see the ECB? It's working now. Once the start process is done, it'll automatically turn itself back off, and it sheds the power off the, uh, off the circuit breaker, so you're not running it if you don't need it. If we're in flight, and we got outside of 40 pounds of fuel from one from one tank to the other, it'll automatically turn your pump on, and it'll automatically open your cross speed. Ah. And so you don't have to worry about doing fuel management at all. It's all done automated, <laughs> which is wow. really, really neat. Yeah. So that's your fuel panel. That's awesome. And the second ones are the secondary engine parameters here. So real, real nice, real neat. You have your map, you know, uh, in your map you have nav data where you can overlay your flight plan here as well. You can overlay terrain, yeah. so that's your terrain sweep, we're in the hangar so it's going to yeah. take everything off the GPS base. You've got nav, other airports that you can yeah. overlay, and you got your moving map, and you also have all your Jepson charts. So it knows exactly where you want to go from and to, overlays the chart, overlays the plate, and actually shows the airplane on the plate. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, the same thing. you got day and night, day and night vision here, okay. which is really, really neat. You have a toga button? Sure do, right here underneath. Okay. So your command bars come up on the toga. And it's full, everything's fully coupled. So the autopilot, fully coupled ILS approaches, fully coupled GPS approaches, okay. uh, WASP capability, LPV, okay. fully coupled. And then to the, the FMS. new model, you're going to have the auto throttle on it. I mean, the throttle coupled too. It's right here. It's already installed here too. It's already installed, okay. Yeah, and it's here, but it's in op on this airplane because uh, it hasn't been certified right. Yeah, yeah. But they're, they're, they're up here. Now, obviously, there'll be some change in the processors yeah, yeah. and how and that it works. automatically switches you from localizer to uh, GPS? You you manually do it here. That's that's the backup. That's the one that's, button you have to hit after the toga. That's it. Okay. That's it. So on toga, yeah, the toga, the toga process is toga, max power, full power, max takeoff, positive rate, gear up, and then you go. You, you would actually be in the FMS if you were in FMS, shooting FMS approach. Perspective, perspective that have. automatically switches you over to GPS. Yeah. yeah. On the go around? Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it is cool. And then you have, uh, so obviously chart, you also so have You don't have to weather. Uh, start so the, the sequencing again. again. Yeah. On the GPS approach, it'll automatically do the sequencing for you? It will do that on GPS. You don't have to hit on suspend? No, it automatically sequences you on the toga to the okay. next fix, and it'll That's actually good. do the hold for you. Uh -huh. The whole nine yards, yep. Nice. And then when you enter the hold, you, you can stay there as long as you want. You just hit exit hold to get out of it. Okay. And that what it allows you to do is actually go into your FMS and reprogram the next... next. Can, can you create other holds, uh, non-published You sure holds? can. You sure can. So right here, you go in, create your own hold on your own All radio. Right. Very cool. You can actually do your left and right turns. You can change nautical miles the minutes. That's what I was asking uh, earlier on. Why can't we yeah. do this in a series? <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Yeah, you, yeah. you can do nautical miles in minutes, and you can do leg lengths, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's going to uh, do wind correction for you. And it'll do it all for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so there it is. Yeah, cool. build, it builds it straight in. It builds it on the map. They overlay the whole nine yards. Do you so. have a radar altimeter? Uh, it does. It have a radar does. altimeter on board. And, yeah, okay. and it's all over here in our sensors. Okay. All the way to the actual good my systems here. All the way over, and one more. And you have all your systems and settings here. And you have, you know, tab, registration, you got uh, heading reference, I think, and radar, call out, does all your call outs here. And okay. it's whatever else they put into it. But they'll put it on the, okay. if you're looking at the 550, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's all this thing. This one has. Okay. Mason bought one of the originals and just incrementally is up yeah, and yeah. up through. So, yeah, they're all built in, so. Um, yeah, it's really simple, huh? It's very, very simple. You know, your comms are here, your nav's the next page over, yeah. your transponder's here, and your weather radar's here. So you, it's all just pages through, everything's a page. Yeah. 
So there's no way the pilot can damage the engine? There's no way you can overthrust or anything? Nope. On takeoff, all you do is go firewall. You go. I let. I, I take it easy. I, I, I ease them up to stabilize them. Yeah. And, that, and halfway. Didn't that happen uh, where somebody uh, firewalled it and they locked full throttle? So they created a. Uh, they had to fix that. They yeah. actually created a. Uh, uh, for a while, there was a plate that went in here. Uh huh. He, he he went actually past the mechanical detent oh, wow. because he slammed it so hard in the in the in the you know, max mm -hmm. power. So um, they've created. Since then, they created a, a, a mechanical fix inside the control panel here. It stops it on the inside. A limiter? Okay. Yeah, a limiter, exactly. Okay. On the inside. But to take off, you just go halfway, stabilize, and just, all you gotta do is push it all the way to the firewall. And it does everything That's for it. you. That's it. You don't have to it, it won't go past 93.7%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And as you climb out and the air temperature gets colder, it gives you more and more performance. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get up to 38,000 feet, 39, 41,000, whatever you're at, it'll be operating at 99%. So how do you access the extra power when you have an engine failure? It automatically knows that 10%, a 10% thrust reduction of N2 or 20% of N1, it automatically gives you your APR reserves. I see. Yep, and it, and it tells you right here, it says take off power APR reserve. Got it. It's all automated in the computer. And it'll go to 100 or more? It'll go to 102. 102. Yep. Nice. And that's okay for, well, it's transient. Emergency, yeah, so. it, it's, it's emergency, but still, uh, you have a transient limitation of uh, five minutes. Okay. Five minutes, 10 minutes on takeoff power, five minutes on the APR. Okay. And then starting limitations is 850 ITT, and you can do it for up to 90 seconds. All right. I'll do it all. Nice. Yeah. What do nice. you think? Pretty neat, huh? Oh, it's very neat. Pretty great. Yeah. That's how it should be done. It's very simple. I tell you, you'll be. It's very simple to fly. Once you learn the buttons, yeah, yeah. that's it. It takes about a day and a half to do the buttonology. And once you get past that, it looks like it's even simpler than Garmin. Garmin is not simple. I agree. Yeah, I would. I mean, you know. Wasn't, Somebody who doesn't wasn't know. Avio uh, an Avidine project? The hardware. The Avio hardware was. was. Originally the Showing the FMS. In uh, an FMS right, here, right, you right. create your own flight plans. You can name them. You can store 99 flight plans in here. Yeah. So okay, in this case, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you listening to? What, what airport? Uh, actually, it's uh, uh, Morristown. Uh, KMMU? Oh, really? So yeah, KMMU. So that's where we are heading now. Oh, okay, we'll go from here to there real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So CHS. And you can also type it, just so you know, I'll put it in the Did next episode. Did you work for before you, uh, you just no. bought one and decided when... Instrument departure, would you like to put one tree? save the ship. That's the wrong way. I have the let's, let's do that one. Let's do oh, Palmetto. Okay. How about that? All right, so it will put your departure in. Cool. So then we'll go to MMU. Okay. So we'll go M, M, U, U. Just like that. Type it up. Enter it. And so you can do it either way. And then you've got uh, an arrival into there, the JQ3. We'll do it over flat rock. Build it all in for you. Continue and execute the flight plan, right? So activate the flight plan, confirm BB, which is what I named it. And it'll store it there permanently now. Push that button, it'll send it on the airplane. Oh, it doesn't know where the airplane is, that's right. We're in the hangar. So, I'll zoom out, and there you are. There it is. And you have to put everything in, it does it all automatically for you. What's really cool is as you come down, It'll give you your crossing restrictions on the arrival. That's, that's 11, 7, all the way down. Yeah. Radar vectors all the way in. You get there and you gotta do an approach. You just highlight it, procedure, put in the ILS. It's ILS, not for GPS guidance. We'll do vectors to final. Continue and execute. Now watch this. It puts it in up here, right? You just put the full approach in up here. So I'm gonna show you something now that I think is pretty cool. If you go to your charts, it automatically knows we're going to Charleston MMU, mm -hmm. right? So we'll select that. We'll go to the ILS 23. Okay. So they're uh, sending you whole wings and uh, put in chart up. Fuselage. I'll put the day on it so you see it in white. Uh -huh. You go back to your map. Where's, where's the assembly? Uh, where's that? Overlays the chart on the screen. Oh, wow. How's that? Okay. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. That's what I was saying earlier. You know, I don't know why Garmin doesn't do that. Oh, is that, that neat? So, what it we do is... The, uh, yeah. the, it overlays the approach chart on your uh, moving map. Okay. On the MFD. Yeah, very nice. So you can do... Uh, that's, so, that's the way it ought to be. And you can still see radar and lightning yeah. strikes and everything on there. That's it. And traffic? Uh, traffic's still right in front of you. Oh, okay. I don't know. So David, you're still learning the perspective. So for you, you look at this and you say, you know what? There's a lot of these features that are a lot 
better yeah. to use. Yeah. The guy that's been flying the perspective for a while, he'll get in this and he'll get confused. <laughs> and he'll say the perspective's better. So it's really all your perspective. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah, 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 I think this is better than perspective. It depends, but you yeah. know what? You know what I'm I don't think yeah. it's any better or worse. I it's think different. It's just different. The R9 and the and this, they all do the same dag on thing. Yeah, There's a one. couple little nuances. If the pilot knows yeah. what he's doing. It's an yeah. IFMS. I mean, but yeah. I really do like what he just uh, pointed yeah, out. That, this that is, is really That will be so I've good. Seen, yeah. You know, that will be so good. Cool. Cool. You know how I shoot the approach? Mm -hmm. I actually do it like this, and I'll overlay it, and it'll keep the chart up over here for me. But I can also just lay this one up so I can see my step downs here as oh, we're coming down. It. Really? Yeah, isn't that cool? So if you can actually take a profile and overlay the profile, and you can lay it straight wow. down. <laughs> so David, even Very you cool. can fly this. Yeah, plane. even I can fly. You can see the airplane and fly the profile. They won't. They won't fly the profile. They'll, oh, okay. they'll fly the plan. They won't yeah. fly the profile. Yet. Right, right, right. But you can fly yeah. the you fly the plan the same way, yeah. and it will show the airplane all the way on it. Yeah, that's yeah. probably that's really cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really. Yeah, nice. the other thing that's happening patented on this thing is when you change your uh, anything on there you guys have the numbers get real big and then they yeah. get real small. When it's that done it goes back in. Hugely helpful yeah. Yeah. Because it so you can see what you're doing. Right Same thing here. Oh, yeah. oh, heavy turbulence. Really nice. yeah, that's that's patented that. so you can't do that with other planes. So Alright, wow. Yeah, that's, that's, really cool. that's a good move. Same thing on the NAS, they all work the same way. Whatever you change them, change them real big, yeah, swap yeah, them yeah. out, yeah, swap yeah. them out. Yeah, that's really nice. Down right to start, yeah. It's neat. <laughs> it's a fun one. Yeah, it's, it's a dream. It is. It is. For sure. it is. You must be having so much fun flying this thing. I am. But this isn't the one million dollar eclipse. This is the two point five million dollar eclipse. This is the two point one. Two point one. This is the two point one five. Yeah. Right on. I'm 